Avengers, you are witness to a new era in vengeance, for in three hours' time, we go into publishing. Oh, get hurt, get him, get an even innocent. Sister Mel and brother will make him take a bit of pills. Sir, I'm warm, warm. Yes, it's on the storm. It all started when my evil brother William shocked the world by getting a job delivering the local free paper. The sun shone, the birds sang, and joy and laughter lay behind every letterbox. Everything was going like a clockwork dream until William saw trouble ahead. And this, purely by coincidence, of course, was when he injured his ankle. Ah! Hey, twisted! Take it easy. I think it might be broken. Pull the other one. What oh, happened, sorry. darling? Ah! You hurt yourself. I told you. There was a tortoise stuck up a tree and I, I didn't think. I just rescued it. That's my boy. And the branch snapped and both of us come down onto it. It has been x-rayed. You might need a cast. Crutches. Oh, Sean. It happens, Celia. I was talking to a guy down the pub. He just tripped over on his shoelace, ended up with two wooden legs. I think it just needs rest, Dad. How's the tortoise? A little bit shell-shocked. Oh, no, God. there's nothing else for it. And... Ah! You're resting on that couch until you're fully recovered. Uh, so, Dad. Well, I'm going to take time off work for as many days as necessary to nurse you back to full health. Sean, I'm not sure that's entirely necessary. I'm here all day. I can look after him. There's no need to thank me. It's just one of the sacrifices you make by being a father. Quite the kettle on for us, would you love? What about your paper round? I know. I don't want to charge his down. Mm. Well, he can't go back out in that ankle. I need my... I mean, he needs his rest. True. We could line up a replacement paper, boy. Like who? I know. It's time you learn to channel your energies into something helpful, Alistair. Besides, you'll enjoy it. The fresh air, the exercise, the chance to make new friends. Now, too traditional. Feel. Too posh. Octopus. Too tentacly. Oh, I got bit on my dog. Alistair, please! Don't dribble all over my kitchen. I'm trying to find recipes for tomorrow's TV show. You're always preparing your TV show. Yeah, but this week there's an extra one. It's a tryout for a different channel. OK, but I got bit on my dog. It's a real channel, Alistair. Well, you don't need a 200-pound satellite digital megabox to receive it. We're talking normal telly through an aerial. Fine, but I got <laughs> it's the break I've been waiting for. But I need a new angle. See, Jamie's got his school dinners, Gordon's got his swearing. I need something that's going to keep people's attention. Something that's going to stop them from drifting up. Alistair! Well, <sighs> mm. oh, I got bitten by his <sighs> What's up with you? It's Dave. <sighs> Scaly Dave. He never shuts up about those flipping tench. He's so boring. Well, this is Mel. This is a tench. Know how you can tell? Markings. Know how else? The smell. I want someone with life experience. I think I've got pneumonia and gravies. Don't be such a drama queen, Alice. Some of us have real problems. Morning, Alice. How was work? Horrible. I got bitten on the calf by a hamster. Bitten on the hamstring by a car. Never told me there were so many animals in your round. <gasps> Hang on, I thought you were injured. Me? No. I was just pretending so you'd have to do the round for me. It's called intelligence, Alice. <laughs> That's not fair! Dad, Dad! What? I'm just preparing some food uh, for your brother to help him get better. Not the beer, obviously. That's a kind of uh, medicine for me. William doesn't need to recover. There's nothing wrong with him. What? 
He was on his feet a moment ago, kicking a cushion about. I don't think so, Alistair. He's got a twisted ankle. No, he hasn't. Of course he has. Or else why would you be doing his paper round? I can see a bright light. Mm -hmm. Should I go towards the light? Oh, please do, and shut the door behind you when you go. You rest, son. There's all the time in the world to get better. I've taken three weeks' compassionate leave, so you take it easy. He's putting it on. There's nothing wrong with him. Ralph, Aaron, it's time to take action. My gentle nature has been pushed too far. When I say William's lying, no one believes me. I need a way to make people listen. My dad's a vicar. People believe what he tells them. So, she'll become a vicar? Er, uh, no. You need qualifications for that. Plus, you have to wear a dress. But I could ask Dad to do a sermon on how evil William is. But how would I make him believe me? Mystery. My dog. You want Alistair's dog to talk to my father? No. We can train the dog to attack William. William will have to run away. And everyone will see he's a faker. Operation Train a Hellhound to show that Will's a foot faker. All right, Mr. E, pay close attention. This sock belongs to the target, Mr. William Fury. Imagine his leg is this dog biscuit. Now, attack! Go, go, go! Go, go, go! Okay, didn't work that time. Let's try something else. This is William. This is Foo. Eat William Fury. Tear him to bits. Stupid dog. Four hours training and he still couldn't do it. We needed another way to spread the news about Will. That's when it hit me. People believe what they read in the paper. So we made our own paper. Or to be precise, our own page to insert into the real paper to tell the world the truth about William's fake injury. Meet the staff. There's Misery, the technical whiz. He does all the printing. Excuse me, Alistair, but... There's Sanjay. He mainly eats chocolates and makes sure Misery doesn't escape. There's our own Ralph, the intrepid paparazzi, the men who gathered my evidence. Just like the real thing. Well done, Misery. Excellent day's work. But are you sure about all these stories attacking your brother? Seems a little bit unfair. Unfair? Me? It's nothing personal. It's the responsibility of the press to print the truth, no matter how ugly. It's what makes us a free society. But still, is it right to be so nasty about one person when... Now, to get these babies delivered. Can't wait to see what Mum and Dad will do to Will. Please, no, Dad. So disappointed in you. Son of mine. I can't, I can't, no, please, no, please, tell me why we're This is terrible, awful. I can't believe you play a trick like this on your own brother. Me? What have I done? Putting these awful stories through everyone's door. But they're true. He was faking. I mean, how do you know this weren't real pages? Because real papers don't use the term big brothers are all smelly fat heads. And you're spelling, Alice. There's only one L in malingering, not six. We're going to have to do something about this. Extra spelling lessons. I mean about his attitude. <sighs> what is it, Alistair? What drives you to behave in such an antisocial way? He does. I'd like you to channel your energies into something more helpful. Helpful? I'm doing his paper round for free. I think the best punishment for you 
would be to do a good deed for each one of us to show you the value of being nice. What? Good idea, Mum. It's the only way he'll learn. I want you each to choose a favour that Alistair can do. William. Um. Yeah. I know what you can do for me, Alice. This apple juice is corked, Alistair. Take it back. Sean, what could Alistair do for you to lighten your heavy burden? It's oh, a difficult one. You know me, I'm not used to thinking of myself. I'm usually helping everyone else sort out their problems. Okay. Melanie, what could Alistair do for you? Um, dump my boyfriend. What? Yeah, you can ditch Dave for me. Oh, I have had it up to here with him and his flipping fish. But I don't know how to dump a boyfriend. Then it's time you found out. Why? I don't want a boyfriend. Just say something like... It's just not really working between you, Dave. Mel needs a bit of space to find herself. She's not ready for commitment. It's not you, it's her. It's the tench, isn't it? She doesn't like the tench. There are three people in this relationship. Well, two people and a fish. But I love her. I can't bear to be without her. I really like Mel too. Sorry, Dave, this is the way things have to be. Dave, don't be like that. <laughs> Plenty more fish in the sea. So I suppose that only really leaves me, doesn't it? I don't want you to do any favours for me, Alistair. Oh, except perhaps there is one little thing. It's not even a favour, really. For tomorrow's show, the one for the proper telly. I've come up with my new angle. Poverty. You what? I'm going to cook food and give it to poor people. It'll make me seem more relevant, more socially conscious. What's that got to do with me? Well, you've got a poor friend, haven't you? Ari or something? Ari. That's him. Poor little mite. Bring him along to be a taster. It'll be fun. And it'll put some food in his empty belly. That's a really bad idea. Don't patronise me, Alistair. Just send your hungry friend along to be fed. Not a cherry kiss. It's not that. I tried your mum's feeling, it's disgusting. Got to do something about this. How about we slip one of Scaly Dave's tension to your parents' wardrobe? Yeah, so we will bite them. It can't bite anyone, it's not alive. Okay, so you put a live fish in their wardrobe, in a tank. That might bite them. But why would they put their hands in the fish tank? We put a sign on, these fish do not bite. But would they believe the sign? It doesn't matter, fish can't read. What? Look, I need revenge they can't criticise me for. A good revenge, a helpful revenge. You mean like a charity revenge? <coughs> yes. A socially conscious revenge? Precisely. If Mum wants to feed the hungry, we'll send her the hungry. This looks like the place. You got the leaflets? Got it. Arrive seven o'clock, seven o'clock sharp. And remember, it's that little twist of grapefruit that gives an eel so much extra oomph. What's that? Sounds like I've got a hungry little mouth to feed. Come on in, Harry. Oh. Hey, me, love. We heard it was free grub. Um, <laughs> slice of eel, anyone? Mm. Operation Fruit Unlock with the Homeless isn't going quite as planned. I was hoping for people a bit more toothless, a bit smellier. <laughs> but still, homeless is homeless, and Mum will hate having them in her kitchen, disrupting her TV show.
This is lovely cereal. Really exquisite. <laughs> I think you could use a bit less grapefruit. Do you? Mmm. It's fighting with the eel. Mm. Instead, maybe try a touch of paprika. I mm. think some mint would really set it off. Yeah. Mm. Do you know, this is the first proper meal that I've had in a week. <coughs> Cheers, Celia. It's fantastic. Oh. <laughs> and cut! That was fantastic, guys. Best show we've done in ages. <laughs> right, not going quite as planned. But at least the rest of the family aren't going to like it. So do you actually sleep out on the streets? Well, some nights, yeah. But it's pretty rough. You have to get used to it. Oh, most of the guys I meet have no life experience. But you, you must have seen some awful things. Well, yeah, but I don't really like to talk about them. No, but I do. Sean, try this. Well, got it for a Chinese sailor at Liverpool Docks. Tell me, Tommy, where did you develop this taste for good food? I worked as a butler for a while. Can't be too specific. Let's just say she's on stamps. Really? Would you like to be on the show again next week? I'm thinking of sourcing my ingredients from actual skips. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. Okay, so the homeless men are nice, Mum's show's gone well, and the rest of the family like them. But wait until they stay overnight. That'll cause problems, won't it? Please! Have you thought about where our guests are going to sleep? Out of this room? Mm, that was my thought. But it's awfully small. I'm not sure three people will fit. Avengers, things have gone badly wrong. I'm sharing my bedroom, not with the homeless. I could deal with that, but with my family. They've mm. kindly given up their rooms and moved in with me. This can no longer be tolerated, since the homeless men won't make a mess and do their jobs. I've arranged for visitors to do it for them. Silent, stealthy visitors who will come and go like a whisper in the night. Will you be careful? Why? We're supposed to be making a mess. Yeah, but a quiet mess, not a noisy mess. Then perhaps you should shut your mouth. Then perhaps you should shut your eyes. <laughs> Imagine what surprises it will bring. If you say so. Here it comes. One, two, three. Oh, how lovely. Eh? Did you do this, Tommy? I took that liberty, yes. Had a whiz round with the vacuum cleaner, too. You see, Alistair, this is what I mean about helping out. I'd like to see this type of attitude from you. Milk or lemon tea, ma'am? Lemon. How did everybody sleep? Well, I hope. Not me. Alice, sleeping on that mattress yours is like sleeping on a pile of elbows. I didn't get a wink of sleep either. <laughs> Perhaps I can cheer you all up with a full English breakfast. Cups and saucers. See ya! See ya! Ah, there you are. Oh, fabulous news! Oh, the TV channel absolutely love you and the new show. The proper channel? Absolutely. Last night's show with the hobos. Good morning. The homeless gentleman was exactly at the angle they were after. A food show with a social conscience. We'll make Jamie Oliver look like Sweeney Todd. Well done, love. Great idea of yours to invite them. Oh. And while these men are staying here, the proper channel will pay for the entire Fury family to find alternative accommodation. What? Hotel Magnifico. Five-star luxury for the whole Fury family. Yes, 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 yes. A 
apart from Alistair. Oh. The offer doesn't extend to you, obviously. You didn't give up your bedroom. I did. No, Alice. Me, Will, Mum and Dad did. You kept your bedroom. You'll have to find somewhere else to stay. Ah, the limo. Limo. The limo. To take you to the helicopter. Helicopter, wow. William should be the one to stay. He's injured. He shouldn't be moved. <sighs> That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I ought to stay behind. But wait a minute. Hallelujah! It's a miracle! I'm cured! Yay! It's not fair! He wasn't injured in the first place! I hate them all. Mum told me to stay with Aaron, but Aaron's mum said I couldn't because she said it was me who told him to put a live fish in her wardrobe. So I'm home alone. This injustice calls for a mega revenge. A revenge to top all revenges. Your refreshments, Mr Fury. All right, thanks. As I was saying, this calls for the greatest revenge in history. Actually, that's quite nice. Mmm. How's that curry coming along, Tommy? Could be one of my better ones. Come to us, my love. Oh, no problems. I've got it. That should do the chores. No need, Mr Fury. It's all been taken care of. All right, thanks. Yes, yes. Stay. You're going to stay. You're teaching my dog tricks. Yeah, it's a great dog, this. Really clever. Lots of potential. Just needs a bit of mental stimulation. That's all. <laughs> clever, Mr E. Ready? Okay. Right, fancy getting my family out of that disgustingly nice hotel, back into this disgustingly disgusting house. Steve from Olden should guess we set up the hotel fire alarms. Emma from Newport, releasing fingers in their water supply. Laxatives. Crocodiles would have the same effect. Oh, look at Mr E. Isn't that cute? This dog's got so clever since Jim moved in. The best way to get my family back to hire a hot air balloon, fill it with gerbils. Alistair, do you really want your family back? What? The house is a nicer place without them. You seem happier. Your dog has just bought you a plate of biscuits. Never thought of it that way. These homeless men are the best family I've ever had. Forget the Furies. They can rot in that luxury hotel for all I care. Gentlemen, today's revenge is cancelled. Mmm, it, it, mm, sure is. Oh, well, I thought I could take uh, Mr. Eve with one on the park later. Do you fancy it? Yeah, sounds good. Cool. Ah, Tommy, there you are. I think I'll have hot milk on my cereal this morning. What exactly do you call this? What? Page 6A. Local boy Alistair Fury this week scattered rubbish all over his own house to make his homeless guests seem like slobs. I, d I don't, I mean... Um... How could you? After we've been so good to you. After I taught your dog all them tricks. After Tommy made you all those lovely biscuits. I thought we'd found a home here, boys. But no, it's just like everywhere else. I, I, I'm sorry, I mean... Come on, lads. I know where we're not wanted. Who could have the technical ability to... Nedry? No. Did you do this? Yes. And you used spell chapter this week. But why? To make sure the words are spelled correctly. I mean, why did you print this story? Because you said it's the responsibility of the press to print the proof, no matter how ugly. It's what makes us a free society. 
I didn't mean it. I mean, prove the truth, but not when it's about me. He's already done next week's story about your love triangle with a boy and a fish. So our little holiday's over. I've lost my new family, and even worse, got the old one back. Alistair! 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 Punish him, Dad. He drove away Jim. Strong, brave Jim. Probably the only man I could ever love. Never mind your love life. He had us moved out of the hotel. The Globe of Sports 3 in that hotel. I'm going to miss the curling finals now. Oh, everything's always about curling with you, Sean. What about me? I lost my one shot at real telly. Cast back to the wilderness of the Wifestyle Channel. 600 viewers a week, and that includes presents. Well, at least everyone's unhappy, and William stopped pretending he's injured, so he gets his job back, and no more paper around for me. Alistair! Alice! You're in big trouble, Alice. Imagine his leg is this dog biscuit. Now, tap! Hey, right, Miss Reed. How's it hanging? Go, go, go! go. Miss Reed, get off, please! <laughs> What's happened? Uh, that's disgusting. Uh, what's he done to it? Obvious, isn't it? He's broken it. He'll be out of action for weeks there, son. I've got to book some time off. That's just great.